Hi, this is Summer with Summerly Design Co. And today I'm going to show you how to knit a stripy tube scarf like the one I'm wearing here. This is the Stash Dive Scarf. It's a free pattern that I've got on my blog. You can also find it on Ravelry and I'll link to both of those below. In the video, I'm going to show you what I did to knit this scarf. It's incredibly simple, but if you want to follow along with a pattern, um, I'll go through all the materials I use, how I selected colors, all the step-by-steps for making it, you can go ahead and download that pattern. Once again, the links will be in the description of this video. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about this. It's a very, very simple tube scarf. It's great for mindless knitting. Um, if your life is a complete dumpster fire and you just need to relax with simple knitting that's not too complicated, knitting yourself a stripy tube scarf out of scraps that you have already on hand is just about the most relaxing thing I can think of. Um, this is knit holding a strand of worsted weight yarn together with a strand of fingering weight yarn. So I had a lot of different worsted weight scraps in my stash and then I had a lot of different fingering weight yarn, sock yarn in my stash, obviously. I design a lot of socks primarily. So I've got a lot of sock yarn leftovers and I know a lot of people do too. Um, whether you've got advent minis, regular minis laying around, just little odds and ends, you can hold it together with finger or with a worsted weight yarn and knit yourself a really awesome, colorful, fun, very warm and snuggly scarf um, to go on all those neighborhood walks we've all been doing since we can't go anywhere else. <laughs> and that's really actually what led me to knit this scarf was we were going on neighborhood walks every day and once it got really cold, I just had winds like blowing all up in my neck and it was awful. Um, so I decided to knit a scarf with scraps. That's how the Stash Dive scarf was born. So I'm gonna walk you through the materials that you need in this video. I'm gonna show you how to knit it. It's very simple. And I'm gonna show you my tips and tricks for knitting in your ends as you go. That way you don't have like a ton of ends to weave in at the end. And I know it's like a tube, so the ends are on the inside, but I still feel like I would know they were there. So I went ahead and knit them in as I go. I'm also gonna show you a tip for avoiding jogs when you change colors. So I'm gonna go through all of that, show you how I buttoned up my ends and all of that I'll go through in the video. Um, once again, it's a scarf that's knit in the round. It is a tube, so you don't have to purl. You literally can just sit there and knit, 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 just straight knit stitches. You can play with color, which is always fun. Um, so yeah, it's just a really good go-to scarf pattern. You can modify it, make it shorter, make it longer for shorter or taller people, for little kids. Um, your grandma, a lot of people knit things for like their 85 year old grandparents and it just, mm, I don't knit for other people. So I just live vicariously through people who do. But anyways, you can modify it however you want. The pattern does include a timeline for you. Like if you knit so many stripes a day, you'll have a scarf in three weeks or whatever. So um, again, you can get the pattern down below in the description of the video. But for now, let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you what materials you need and I'll go through the whole thing. The so materials you need to knit the Stash Dive Scarf are pretty simple. First, you're gonna need a pair of 16 inch US size 10 circular knitting needles. You're gonna need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends, a stitch marker, a pair of snips, and then of course your yarn. So this pattern is knit by knitting a strand of worsted weight and a strand of fingering weight yarn held together. So you're gonna need a selection of worsted weight yarn from your stash and a selection of you know sock yarn scraps, leftovers, minis, whatever you've got in your stash um, that you're gonna to hold together with the worsted weight yarn. I used approximately 655 yards of the worsted weight and then approximately 692 yards of the fingering weight sock yarn in order to get my six foot long scarf. So that's what you're gonna need too. Of course, if your scarf is a little longer or a little shorter, you're gonna need a little more or a little less. Um, but anyways, the point is just to go stash diving, to find stuff in your stash. So you can use whatever you've got on hand to mix and match. Um, in the pattern, I talk a little bit about how to match, like how to match your colors and how to decide like which fingering yarn should go with which worsted weight yarn. But ultimately, just go by how you feel, um, what looks good and what feels right to you, and 
whenever you're matching them together, what just kind of sparks in your brain is like, oh, that's perfect. That's the best combination. Um, so you really just kind of want to go with your gut and what kind of looks good to you. But I did include a guide of kind of how I choose and place colors together and what I did for my scarf. Um, again, the pattern details, all of this, all the materials that you're going to need. Um, once you've got everything together, it's time to get started. So I'm going to show you um, how to kind of get going on the scarf. It's very simple. There's not a lot of instruction to it, but the first thing we need to do is cast on 58 stitches with our first color that we're gonna do and then get started knitting. So I'll be back in just a second once I cast on my stitches and I'll show you how we go from there. All right, I have now cast on my 58 stitches. I use long tail cast on. You can cast on with whatever method you prefer. Um, but once you get your stitches cast on, it's now time to join in the round and start knitting the scarf. So I'm just gonna take my stitch marker. I'm gonna put that in place to mark the beginning of the round. And we wanna be careful not to get our stitches twisted. Um, if your stitches look like that, they're twisted. You can kind of see the twist right here. So you want to make sure that your stitches are all going the same direction. You can kind of see how mine all face the inside. So you wanna make sure not to twist your stitches. Put your stitch marker on there. And then we're just gonna join for working in the round. We're just gonna start knitting. And this is literally all you're going to be doing from here until you get to the end. Um, you're just gonna knit, knit around. This first round can be a little tough, like your stitches kinda wanna get stuck. You know how it is on the first round. And then once you get second, third, fourth round, everything kinda stretches out, sits nicely, and you can just fly. Um, and just knit away. So that's literally the only instruction for the scarf is to join in the round and start knitting. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. That's what you do. You just keep knitting around in a circle. You never have to purl. You're just knitting around in the round in a circle. Each stripe for my scarf, I did 10 rows of each color. And then I joined in a new color and did 10 rows of that and just kept going. You can do whatever stripe sequence you want. If you wanna do five rows of each color, seven rows of some, 10 of another, however you wanna do it. But if you want it to look like mine, I did 10 rows of each color. Again, this is all laid out in the pattern. So you can follow along with that if you ever wanna reference what I did. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be back in a minute, and I'm gonna show you how I knit my ends in as I go so that I don't have to weave in a ton of ends when I'm done, and how I avoid a jog in the stripe. Whenever you join in a new color, you always get like a jog or a bump, kind of. Um, and that's because you're actually not knitting a circle, you're knitting a helix. So I'm gonna show you in just a minute um, how I join in new colors, how I knit my ends in as I go, and how I avoid getting a jog. And that makes this even easier because when you're done, you don't have to weave in all those stupid ends, which with a six foot scarf, that's a lot of ends. So I highly recommend doing that just to save yourself some headache. Of course, it is a tube, so you know no one would ever see the ends. They'd be on the inside if you don't wanna worry about knitting in your ends as you go either. But I'm just the kind of person that it would bug me knowing that they were there. <laughs> so I knit my ends in as I go. So be right back in just a minute and I'll show you the trick for that. All right, I've obviously knit more than a few rows of colors, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to switch colors. Presumably you've knit your first set of colors. You're on your very last row of your first color, the 10th row. Go ahead and stop on your 10th row when you've got eight stitches left in the round. So that's what I've done. I've knit nine full rows. I'm almost done with my 10th. And now it's just about time to join in a new color. So the way to do this to avoid having to knit in a bunch of ends, first you're gonna take your new color, which is the purple here, and I'm gonna lay it over the color I'm already using, this um, cream and black mixture. So I'm just gonna lay it over like that, if I can get my butter fingers to work. Okay. <laughs> so as you can see, I've just laid it over, and now I am going to knit a stitch. 
Okay, and now I've trapped that yarn behind my stitch. So now I'm actually going to knit it in as I go. And how I do that is I take the yarn, wrap it around my pinky, and then wrap it around my forefinger. And then I am going to insert my needle into my stitch as if I were knitting, just like normal. And I'm going to just flick the new yarn over my right needle, okay? Then I'm gonna take my existing yarn and I'm gonna wrap it as if to knit. It automatically slides under this new yarn that I've got going in and I'm just gonna knit the stitch. See, you can't see it on the right side. It's just trapped on the wrong side. Now the next stitch, I just knit with no wrapping and that fully catches it, okay? Now I'm going to wrap again, just flick it over and knit. Then trap it and we'll just keep going like that. Every other stitch is when you flick it over like that. And then the next stitch, you trap it. So you're just doing it every other one. And then the last. All right, so now I have my new color automatically woven in on the back. As you can see, it's trapped there in the back. Can't see it in the front. Um, so super, super cool how that works. It's kind of like magic. Um, so now I'm actually going to start knitting with my new color. So I'm going to bring my old color over and we're gonna do the same thing. That way I don't have to weave in the old color. I'm gonna grip it in my hand just the same way. I'm gonna slide my stitch marker here, which really I should have done before, <laughs> but I didn't, so now it's in my way. Okay, this stitch marker, by the way, is from Hello Lavender, in case anyone was wondering. This is from her Hocus Pocus set that she had in the fall of 2020, and this is the Moon Over Salem, and I love these stitch markers. All right, so the same thing. We're gonna flick the old color over and start knitting with the new. And then the second one, we trap. Now we flick it over, knit a stitch. And the second one, we trap it. So again, you're just flicking it over every other one. You're not doing the flick thing every stitch. And I like to do, sorry, I had to adjust there. I like to do eight stitches either end. So when I bring in the new color, it's eight stitches, and then when I'm weaving in the old color, it's eight stitches. And it is just that simple. I stopped counting, so I may have gone beyond <laughs> eight stitches. All right, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now you can cut the old color and then just keep knitting in the new color. And I'm gonna show you what we do with all those little ends. When we get to the end of the scarf, I'll show you how I deal with those. Um, what you're gonna see on the wrong side, all the way down your scarf are just all these little ends. And I'm gonna show you how I trim those and kind of tighten them up so everything's really firm. But next, what I'm gonna do is show you how I avoid getting a jog when I get, I want a nice smooth transition between colors. And because when you're knitting, you're actually knitting a helix, not a full circle, you end up getting a jog where two colors join whenever you're doing stripes. But there are little tips and tricks you can do to minimize the jog so it's not quite as noticeable. So once you've knit in your new color, knit one complete round in the new color, and that's what I'm gonna do now. And when I come back, I'll show you what I do on the second round to avoid getting a jog. Okay, so I have now knit my first round in my new color. I have slipped my stitch marker. I'm ready to start the second round. And we are just going to do one simple thing at the start of our second round. Oh, there went my stitch marker. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna do one simple thing at the start of the second round only in order to help minimize the jog you get whenever you're switching colors and doing stripes. So instead of knitting this very first stitch on the second round, I'm gonna slip it like that. And then I'm just gonna knit all the way around like normal. 
And again, this is only on the second round of a new color. You do not need to do this on rounds three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Just the second round of your new color. You just slip that first stitch like you saw me do, and then you're just gonna knit. Just keep going all the way around, okay? And when you come back around, you've completed round two, you're just gonna knit that first stitch and keep going with round three. So all you have to do to minimize a jog is just slip the first stitch of the second round only and then just knit, keep going all the way until you finish this color change, which again, these are 10 row stripes. So you would just keep knitting. You only have to slip the first stitch on the second round only. And that helps minimize the jog so that you don't have like a major hiccup basically whenever you're changing colors. So that's all there is to it. So now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna knit, 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 lots of different colors. You can refer to the pattern to see how many rows you need to do um, in order to get a six foot scarf. I'm almost done with mine. I'm actually filming these particular tutorials when I'm almost done. So I don't have much longer to go, but if you're just starting, you've got a ways. <laughs> so you're gonna knit until your scarf is six feet long or your desired length. And then once you come to the very last color section, check back in because I'm gonna show you how to deal with all of the ends that you have on the inside of your scarf that we've been knitting in. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna snip those and kind of tighten them up so that they're nice and, um, neat looking and then i'm going to show you how we're going to deal with the open ends of our scarf we'll have an open end at the beginning and we'll have an open end at the at the end so i'm going to show you what i'm going to do in order to close those up so when i come back we'll go ahead and get started on the finishing aspects of our scarf all right i have now finished knitting my scarf all six feet of it it's done and because i'm choosing to close my ends up. I don't want them open. I, when I cut my yarn, I cut off a really, really long tail so that I could Kitchener stitch this end closed. Um, I always cut off way more than I need whenever I'm doing Kitchener stitch because I live in perpetual fear that I will have cut off too short of a tail and won't be able to finish the Kitchener stitch. So um, I cut off a ton, a ton of yarn in order to do my Kitchener stitch and I'm just gonna leave that there. If you do not want to close up the ends of your scarf, you don't have to, you can leave them open. Um, you would just go ahead and bind off. You would just bind off this end cut your yarn and weave in the tail on the end and then weave in the tail on the other end that you've got when you first started. I will unroll this. Um, so yeah, you would weave in, you know, your ends from when you first started. There it is. You would weave in that end, bind off, weave in this end and your scarf is done. And all you have to do is what I'm about to show you to deal with all of the ends on the inside of the scarf. So you can go ahead and bind off. I don't know if you can hear that. That's my cat meowing at me. I didn't shut the door all the way and she's come in. Um, anyways, if you want to close up your ends though, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment. So go ahead and cut your yarn, but leave a really obscenely long <laughs> tail so that you can do Kitchener stitch on this end. But for now, what we're gonna do is we are going to turn our scarf inside out. I'm gonna scooch my yarn back on my needles and I'm gonna carefully turn my scarf inside out. So I'll be back in a moment because it's six feet and it's gonna take me a minute and you probably don't wanna watch that. So <laughs> I'll be back in just a moment with my scarf wrong side out and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with all of those ends that we have. All right, I have now gently turned my scarf wrong side out. Um, so now I'm gonna show you what we do with all of these ends that we knitted in. We've got all these little strings on the inside. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to gently tug, not too tight, just kind of gently give that a little tug. Just go up the entire scarf, just gently tugging those ends and not too tight because it will pucker the fabric. And so I like to kind of just, after I tug, kind of stretch and we're just kind of evening those out a little. So once we've done that, we are going to take scissors and we're just gonna trim these. I don't take, you know, I leave a good 
little, I don't know, half inch or so um, after I trim, just so it doesn't poke through to the other side. And that's literally it, just a gentle tug and then snip those little ends. So that all up and down the inside of the scarf, it's just neat like that. So that's all you have to do to deal with all of your ends. It's just give a gentle tug, kind of stretch out the fabric right there with your hands so that it's not too tight and it doesn't pucker. And then take your scissors and just trim. It's super satisfying, <laughs> like a lot more fun than weaving in ends, just getting to go up and down and just trim them all the length of the scarf. So that is how you handle your ends. If you've decided to leave your ends of your scarf open, um, like this, where it's just open, then you're done. You've, you know, weave in the ends that you started with on the end and then the weave in the end at the end of the scarf. And then once you've trimmed all of the ends where you change colors, then you're done. You can block your scarf, it's ready to wear. If like me, however, you want to close both ends, I'm gonna show you how to do that. The end that you started from, we're going to sew closed. And then the other end, let me pull it up here. This end that is still on your needles, we are going to close with Kitchener stitch. So first I'm going to show you how to close the beginning end of your scarf where you cast on. Um, I I'm just gonna be threading a needle. I'm gonna go ahead and weave this in and then I'm gonna thread a needle with a really long, long strand of my yarn so that I can sew this closed. So I will be back in a moment to show you how to do that. Okay, I now have my tapestry needle threaded and I am ready to sew this end closed. So I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to slide it. I'm gonna go ahead and focus this in some more and just slide it underneath the bars of these two stitches. And then just gonna pull it through. I threaded a really long tail. Once again, <laughs> I live in perpetual fear that I won't have enough, you know, to get me by there. So there we go. And then through the other side, just keep sticking it under the bars of the stitches and then pulling it through. And I'm just gonna do that all the way until I get to the end, just sticking it under the bars. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see them. Um, so you kind of have to wiggle it in. I guess it would help, there we go. So yeah, just sticking it under the bars, pulling the yarn through. And again, I always get exceptionally long tails. And sometimes it's hard to pull them through because they're, they wanna get caught. All right. And you just kind of have to keep your fabric sort of pinched because of course it wants to curl and stuck in it. So just go under the bars like so and pull it through. And I'm just going to do that until I get to the very end. And that's how we sew the bottom closed. And of course for the top, I'm going to knit it closed using Kitchener stitch. So once I get this bottom closed up, I'll be back to show you how to do that. All right, I have finished sewing up the beginning of my scarf, the end that I started with when I cast on. I just simply sewed it closed and now we're ready to knit the other end closed with Kitchener stitch. To do that, of course, we wanna turn our scarf back right side out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll meet you back here ready to start the Kitchener stitch. All right, I am ready to Kitchener stitch the other end of my scarf closed so that both ends are nice and tidy and closed up. Again, you don't have to do this. You can leave them open. Um, it's just something I wanted to do. So we started with 58 stitches for this scarf. So to Kitchener stitch, of course, we want those kind of divided in half. Um, so we would have 29 stitches on this side and we'd have 29 stitches on this other side. I do have a tutorial video for Kitchener stitch. If you have never done this before, you might wanna watch that video first. Um, I'll link it in the description of this video. It's what I do to close up the toes of my socks and we're gonna be doing the same thing here. So I've got my length of 
yarn, which I told you was like really ridiculously long because I'm always afraid I won't have enough. So I've got a really long strand of yarn here that I cut whenever I finished sewing or when I finished knitting the very last row of my scarf. The tail I left behind was very long so I could Kitchener. So I'm gonna start, whenever I Kitchener stitch, I don't do the setup rows because it leaves pointy ends and I don't like that. So I just get right into Kitchenering. So I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and I'm going to stick it knitwise through the first stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little here. All right, I'm gonna stick it knitwise through the first stitch on the needle that's closest to me, the front needle. And I'm gonna pull it all the way through. And this is going to take a minute because like I said, <laughs> this strand is really, really long. Um, so yeah, we're just going to keep pulling that through <laughs> however long it takes. You could probably go make yourself some coffee while I'm pulling this through. All right, pull it all the way through and slip that stitch off the needle. Now I'm going to stick the needle purl wise into the needle that's closest to me, the second stitch on the needle closest to me and I'm gonna pull the yarn all the way through. And instead of dropping off the stitch, I'm going to leave it on. So the way it works with the front needle is you put the needle knitwise into the first stitch and slip it off. You then put the needle purlwise into the second stitch and leave it on. Now we're going to move to the back needle and I'm going to insert the needle purlwise and I'm going to slip it off and pull the yarn through. Again, this is so painful. I know, I have so much yarn. <laughs> I'm just so afraid I don't have enough. Pull it through. Then we're going to insert, in, insert. We're going to insert. <laughs> we're going to insert the needle knitwise into the second stitch on the back needle and we're going to leave it on. So front needle, insert knitwise, take it off insert purl wise leave it on back needle insert purl wise take it off insert knit wise leave it on and you are going to keep doing that all the way until you reach the end so i'm going to go ahead and get us to the very end and then i'll be back to show you how i deal with the very last stitch that we're left with whenever we're kitchenering it closed all right, I have now finished Kitchener stitching all the way to the end. I've got this long tail left and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna to do to get rid of that. We are simply going to stick the needle in right below where we finished. And then we're just gonna kind of scrunch it down here. And I'm just gonna poke it out somewhere down here. I'm going to pull all the way through and then kind of pull on it to straighten it. And then I'm just gonna snip this right there. And I'm gonna take a picture of this in a minute for the pattern, so I'm not gonna snip it in the video so that I can have this tutorial in picture form in the pattern as well. But you would just snip it right there. This string would just disappear inside and your scarf will be complete. Both ends will be sewn up. All you have left to do is block it and then you can wear it for many years to come. Um, and again, once again, you don't have to sew your ends closed. I just really wanted to. Um, so yeah, what you're left with is a six foot pile of squish. Um, and hopefully you got to use a lot of leftover yarn that you had in your stash that you hadn't used and that you were just looking for something to do with it. Um, and I hope you had a lot of fun too. It's just a really nice, relaxing knit this particular scarf. Um, I really enjoyed just doing, you know, two or three stripes a day um, in the evening. It was just a nice palette cleanser when you're doing other projects that take a lot of concentration. Um, once again, the free pattern will be linked in the description of this video so that you can have the pattern to follow along with as you knit it. It also includes timetables like for, you know, knit two stripes a day and you'll have a scarf in a month, that kind of thing. Um, and then of course it includes all the yardage that you'll need um, when you go stash diving to knit the scarf. Um, and then I'll also link my Instagram if you wanna follow me along there for future free patterns and just fun tips and tutorials. And I will link my Ravelry and Etsy stores in case you wanna check out other patterns I've done. They're mostly socks, um, but occasionally I do venture out and do a sweater or a scarf like this. 
So thanks for following along. I really hope that you enjoy knitting this scarf. I hope it keeps you really warm and cozy. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.